Hello everyone, uh, today I am attempting my second Inkscape tutorial. The plan of action for today is that we're going to create our characters um, ready for animation. Okay, so um, originally I would have shown you in Illustrator, uh, but being that Illustrator is in a free version, uh, most of you don't have that. I'm going to be using Inkscape to do so, but I'm going to talk you through the process because the end product we're looking for is something like this okay so I've created a character out of um, shapes primitives within Illustrator uh, and then I well I've taken this into After Effects and uh, rotated the limbs to create a walk cycle but throughout this process it's going to be quite a lengthy tutorial I'll break it down into a couple but what we're going to do is first look how we create and prepare a character for for design um, uh, design a character, sorry, ready for animation, and then we're going to look at how we actually animate it. Okay, so the idea is we're going to have this continuous loop walk cycle, and we're going to look at principles of animation, how we create walk cycles, uh, how we make them realistic. Um, however, obviously, at this stage, there's a little bit of popping and stuff here where the leg comes out, but at this stage, um, something like this for our game would be fantastic. We'll be able to um, have a continuous walk. Uh, for our character we'd have a, an idle scene as well where they were paused while they're waiting for you to click so if we jump into Illustrator I'm just going to explain the principles before we start recreating this in um, in Inkscape so here on the side you'll see my layers um, my layers panel these it's important to know aren't all under one layer so that is one layer the head this uh, layer setup is just for when I export to After Effects uh, it allows me to import the layers and still manipulate objects within that layer but um, that's not going to be as relevant now in Inkscape um, and, and we'll be we'll be animating as well um, after that but I'll talk about that later I don't want to confuse it so basically uh, at this stage uh, you can see I've broken down the objects so I've got my head layer I've got my shoe layer you couldn't see that one because that was his front shoe. Uh, you, his lower leg, so if I were to take away his upper leg and his lower leg at the same time as taking upper leg and lower leg from the other side. So I've got front upper and I've got back upper. Uh, we've got front and back shoe. Uh, I've got his upper body, which obviously there's only one of. I've got his uh, back arm upper um, and I've got his front arm upper. You can see the shapes. So we're using basic primitives, but all of his limbs sort of break down. Um, okay, so that we can animate them and pose them. And then I've got uh, a little bit of an extra. So I've got um, three three phases of his blink. Okay, as well. So we're animating the blink to make it look a bit more realistic. So if you look here, you notice his blink uh, just makes the character feel a bit more alive. Walking with intent, obviously he's walking quite pacily. So uh, what I've done is stagger that. So over one frame, you've got the start of the blink, second part of the blink, the full blink, and then you could ping that back. And that's how the blink's happening, okay? So that's how we've created the character within Illustrator. Uh, I might actually bring that into Inkscape just for example. So I've copied that. So I'm going to recreate it in Inkscape. Okay, so I'm going to put it off my canvas off to the side. Zoom in a bit. He's a bit pixelated, but we're not going to worry about that because we're not going to be using him. Um, I have prepared a folder for you as well. I've made it available on Moodle. Uh, if you're watching this and you're not on my course, uh, I can share the folder anyway with you. Um, but um, yeah I, I can make that resource available on YouTube but looking at our um, our references here it's important that we sort of start to understand why we've broken down the character in the way we have so if I look at this example you, you can see the hands are broken down into different shapes the legs are broken down into different shapes so these are all different things you could animate with the character and we've got a, a side a partial side a front and a back and then a load of different expressions for the character um, and these are really useful. Sometimes the most of this stuff I've created is either to get a style guide or to give you an idea about how the animation works. So this, um, I think these are Pascal Campion's uh, type characters, is an artist. But these sort of characters give you um, 
a nice idea about some inspiration for, for some simple character designs that look really effective. Uh, I also like the really stylized um, walk cycles that you get here. This is great um, for recognizable characters like Captain America. Uh, and then we've got a little nice walk cycle for Sherlock Holmes following an ant, which is cool, trying to burn it. Uh, but also I put some walk cycle gifts in there as well that you can have a look at and I've used this technique myself as well with the shadow so it just makes it feel like they're making impact on a ground layer okay um, so you look at different uh, attitude or different sort of uh, emotions when they walk so you can see like this character's clearly bounding so he's in a rush to get somewhere and uh, this sort of Looks a bit like Clark Kent, but he's got he's going nowhere and he's a big guy. Let's think about the phone box, that probably is Clark Kent Superman. But yeah, this is essentially like I just showed you, you break the characters down into different uh, limbs and so on. But what we're going to do is export each and every one of the limbs and sort of blow up this character so that we can manipulate and articulate, if we look at this example, each and every one of the limbs so that when we get our walk cycle, uh, it's able to be posed quite straightforward. So for that reason, when we come into Inkscape, we're going to design each and every um, one of these assets uh, and export them separately so that we can um, animate them easier. Okay, let's get started and create some of this character. Okay, so um, it's important that we consider how we're going to break this character down so I might start from the feet work my way up um, and in terms of sort of feet and stuff like that I can then duplicate legs uh, and so on but it's important obviously that looks like one continuous shape at the moment but then if I look at it in here it's actually two which is important for when we bend and articulate that shape okay so um, my pivot points in the middle I'll show you that in a minute but it's important that we've got these overlaps um, so that when the leg does rotate uh, it makes it clear that it's um, it's rotating uh, and not popping out of the out of the character but yeah we're going to work our way up so we'll do the shoe sock lower leg upper leg uh, and then we can duplicate that across to make our second leg um, and what I might do is change the color of the back leg ever so slightly so it looks like it's in shadow a little bit so that we get some depth to our character all right um, and if you do wish to, um, to to do this sort of thing where you've got the character from all different views so that if in your game you're intending on having different shots of your character then that's a really sensible idea and obviously you've got to draw the character from different angles but what I'm sort of thinking is just for my examples I'm just going to do it in this side view um, so that uh, my game will be sort of very linear sideways on but uh, in the interest of saving time to show you through these tutorials so uh, I'm going to use today a new tool that we haven't sort of looked at uh, I'm going to use this tool here okay which is the draw bezier curve it works exactly the same as the pen tool does in uh, Photoshop uh, in Illustrator but let me show you so if I'm using my example here I click click to make a straight line I click and drag to make a bezier click to make a straight line click and drag to make that bezier rounded corner same again and then I can like create that shape there okay so I've got a bit of a shoe let's give him a grayish shoe he's got a stroke color at the moment which I don't want but I'll create that in a minute come to my move tool see how that looks okay that's not too bad quite happy with that at the moment if you want to make trainers or whatever, obviously you can add some details on top of that. You could have a nice black outline like I've got there uh, and then do some sort of shapes on top of it just to sort of create uh, your, your logos and stuff. So if you wanted to do that or obviously you can make boots or anything that you wanted to use in the same thing. So I only use the pen tool. There was nothing too exciting uh, other than that. Um, let's give him, there you go, those will do. Uh, and in terms of stroke color, I don't particularly want a stroke color. So stroke paint, there you go. I'm happy with that. Uh, you could do a nice outline to it. Sometimes that makes it a bit more uh, clear, stands out on the page a little bit better, but I'm happy enough with those. All right. So, so far, so good. Let's carry on.
So what I want to do before creating this sock is, is start to look at sort of my layers panel. OK, so to make sure that I keep everything in the order I want them to be so that, for example, the sock is behind the shoe rather than on top of it else it's going to look weird and so on. So you want like the neck behind there. So you've got to control the layers. So it tells me what layer I'm working on at the moment, layer one. And if I'm correct, I've only got one layer open at the moment. The layer two obviously is normally on the side in Illustrator and we're quite used to um, we, we're used to um, uh, obviously being able to see those. But if I come into layer layers here, my layer tool appears at the top. OK, so at the moment, yes, I'm working on one layer. Uh, nothing too spectacular there. So I'm just going to call that shoe. I double clicked on it. I'm going to call that layer shoe. So it tells me your shoe is in shoe. Obviously, uh, my character here also will be in shoe layer. So what I could do. Layer name, let's call this um, ref. So I can call that my reference layer. Um, I want it to go below the current layer. And at the moment, I don't think anything's added to it. No. So let's click on my character. At the moment, this is in shoe layer. So move that to ref. So now if I turn it off, ironic, nothing happened there. In theory, in Illustrator, what that would have then done is move that. Okay, let's move that to ref, see if that now works. No, it doesn't want to move any of it to ref. Okay, that's frustrating. Let's move that to ref. Okay, forget about it. <laughs> the thought was there. I'll have to work out why that doesn't add another video. Um, so, this is in shoe. I'm going to create a new layer now and call it. Um, actually, theoretically, this is going to be the sock would be attached to the shoe. Come to think of it, so like in my example, I've got the shoe here. But if you see the sock and the shoe are one the same, so what I'm going to do is repeat that as well in here. So I will keep it on the shoe layer. Uh, let's come back to our pen tool. Obviously, if you want to be using circle and then going up to object to path and then manipulating it. You, you can be doing that as well. That isn't a problem whatsoever, however you wish to draw it. But I particularly like the draw bezier. I just always enjoyed that. So uh, let's make a little sock. So I do not want to start from there. So let's zoom in a bit. So remember control, middle mouse button. Uh, we'll draw a sock. So I've got the top of it here. So this is the first time we're sort of going to do something overlapping, but I'm going to come well into the shoe rather than following it. So there's an overlap because once we've arranged this, you won't see it. I can bezier that or whatever I want to do. It's not a problem. Uh, then let's bring it to here. Bring my sock like that. OK, so at the moment I've got no fill and a stroke line. Well, I don't want a stroke, so let's get rid of that. Stroke line. Uh, and let's pick a color of sock. That's horrendous, which I quite like. Uh, let's go yellow. Let's be brave. OK, very nice. So we've got a dodgy yellow sock. Very nice too. Move to layer. So same. And what essentially I want to do here now is arrange my layer. Um, I want to arrange this so it goes behind in my layer, behind my shoe. OK, so to do that, let's see, making it because I've got a long, if I click on it. So usually I'll be able to right click and go to arrange. But if I lower selection one step, that's it. Right, so the shortcut would be page down key. Oh, that's interesting. So if I hit that, yeah, there you go. My sock will move behind my object. I can use my arrow key. So if I use page up, page down, ah, oh, there you go. Interesting. That's cool. I can I can move the sock so it, it goes behind my object a little bit here. Very nice. So we've created this sort of sock. Uh, I can scale it in a little bit. I'm not happy with the size. Bring it back a little bit there. Okay, obviously it's way too tall, but we're going to cover that over with the jeans. Uh, yellow is a very garish colour. Let's give him green socks for now. All right. So happy days. Okay, so we've got a foot here. All right. So let's make sure we we'll move to layer. We'll make sure we're definitely in the shoe layer. Um, I do wonder if I can then 
I bet it's because I imported it. Move that to layer ref move. Oh, it is now on ref layer. So in theory, ah, there you go. That's what I was looking for earlier. So I was obviously doing it wrong by changing that. I was just changing what layer I was viewing. That makes sense. Okay, so there you go. We have to right click and move it to the layer. So I'll keep my ref open for now. Um, but I'm going to make a new layer now. I'm going to call it lower leg. I like underscores. It keeps things tight. Uh, we'll move it. As you can see, I've moved it into the wrong place. Uh -huh. uh, so I will move up to the top. Just got to jump onto Discord. I shan't be a sec. I'll pause the video. Okay. So let's draw ourselves a lower leg. Uh, let's zoom in a little bit. Okay. And pan across. Obviously, I kept my page at A4 for today because it didn't really matter. We're going to export all of these items separately anyway, so it's fine. So I'm going to use uh, my pen tool again, Bezier tool, sorry. Um, and we're going to just create this sort of lower part up to just above the knee, all right? Uh, so up to you how you do it. Let's zoom in a little bit. But um, create a bit of hoop cut at the bottom um, let's zoom out again so control middle mouse scroll let's come up to about here okay I'm just going to make sort of a rounded top almost like a ball joint uh, then let's straight line back to there okay zoom in a bit uh, if I want to move my points I come up to the busy app here Let's just move that, just neatening it up a little bit. Okay, something like that's all right. Um, okay, I've got to jump back on Discord in just a second for one of my students, but um, let's just finish this where we are. Okay, so da, 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 da. that's all right. Okay. That's good. Right, we don't want a stroke color on the outside, so let's get rid of that. Well, I don't anyway, particularly. Uh, and then let's have a look. Wow, there's some garish trousers. So let's look at some um, color for our trousers. Okay. Like I said, the front one's going to be a bit lighter than the back one, so I might might give him sort of this kind of color, um, but make it a little bit lighter. So that when I create the back one, I'll make it fractionally darker, all right? And if I want to move that down, so I'm not properly ankle swinging, I see I can use the down and up arrow to make it a bit more precise. But that's going to be lower leg, all right? So let's zoom out again, and we're going to repeat these steps. Um, basically, hopefully you're starting to use this. We're going to repeat these steps of the body. So I am going to. Pause the video so I can jump on Discord. Two seconds. Okay, not that you would have noticed, but I am back. Um, so, essentially, I'm now going to create the upper leg. Um, at the moment, obviously, I've just called this lower leg. Uh, I will um, duplicate this, give it to a new layer so that I can create the background, but I'll do that in a bit and, and, and clear everything up for you. Um, once it's created but now we're going to create this upper leg section here so if you look obviously the joint comes into the body itself um, I purposely brought it down around the sort of the butt here uh, so that it doesn't pop out too easy um, when the leg is swinging backwards um, so we're going to come up bring it down and then we're, we've got this crossover between these two that you can see so um, that the, the, the leg doesn't become disjointed so let's come back here um, and let's um, create the top of the leg. Okay. So let's create. I can come back and edit this so it looks a bit cleaner in a bit. I want to bring it out a little bit so the leg, so the quadriceps sort of muscle comes out a little bit. Give it a bit of rounding here. Bring it down to a point here ish and we're going to come all the way down here and then 
Let me show it off there. Okay, so very rough. Like I showed you before as well, we've got the capability now of being able to change these points. Um, oops. Um, let's move that back a little bit. Just creating a bit of shape for the leg. Obviously, we can change this. We can have a look how this looks in a minute, but um, if we're happy with it. So I can now, let's use ink dropper this time, pick colors from image, eye dropper, sorry. Uh, so I can eye drop that. Obviously it's still got its board fill, um, its stroke. So I'm gonna turn that off and we've created a bit of a leg. So probably a bit big. So let's bring that down a little bit. It thinks it's helping me by snapping. It's not. Okay. Cool. Okay, I think that's frustrating. Let's do it this way. Okay, that's probably about right. Okay, so that's upper leg. Obviously, I forgot to create a layer for that. I could pretend I'd done that on purpose. I really didn't, but let's pretend I did. So, um, what I would do then is upper leg. I want it above current because my current layer is lower leg, so I want this on top of that. So let's call it upper leg. And at the moment, obviously, this leg is still in the reference layer. So if I right click, uh, move to layer, upper leg, move. Let's just check that is in lower leg, that is in upper leg. Shoot, yeah, we're doing well so far. Okay, so excellent. Um, an interesting point at this stage, just, just to sort of show you um, what we're sort of doing here. Um, obviously, these objects aren't attached at the moment. So when I move or rotate this, so if I, let's double click on it. Um, sorry, let's use this tool once, twice. I get my rotation tool. So at the moment, it will rotate around the middle of the leg, yeah? Because our axis point is here. We don't actually want it to rotate there when we when we bring it into the other program. And not that that wonderfully matters, but because we're not going to animate in here. But if I were to move this little cross, this is the pivot point, and now rotate, you can see the rotation happens around that that point there. Okay, uh, so you can just move the pivot point of an object uh, should you wish to move the angle from where it pivots from. Okay. We're essentially going to be doing that, but in another program. Okay, so next we're going to make his torso. Okay, and this is where we start to, or her, obviously depends on your character, but this is where we start to um, make the character sort of a bit more realized. It starts to look a bit like it's supposed to. So let's start my let's overhang top a little bit. I don't want to do that. Let's zoom in a bit. Okay. Pick my tool again. So I'm going to come here. It's too far out, but I'll correct that in a minute. Okay, remember you can zoom out as we go. Way too far out. I'll move that back. So if I control Z, come to about here. Look a bit of a tummy on him. We can correct that in a minute. So I want to come out, give him a bit of a back come in a little bit and then work down toward the waist. That's a bit much, but we'll correct in a minute. So we're going for this sort of shape, rough and ready, I know, but remember you can fix these. Right, let's scroll in again. So click on it, bring that a bit straighter. So I want a bit of overhang, but not too much. Same applies to here. Zoom out a little bit. Scroll up a little bit. So, for example, that's way too tight of an angle. Smooth that out a little bit. Same applies there. Just rounding off these edges a little bit. I might pull in his chest a little bit. Okay. Happy with that. Obviously, if you do want to change any of these points, you see it's famous last but if you do want to change any of these points, um, you've got all the options up above. Um, we did look before at adding new points, but if you want to sort of make them into curves and so on, make sure they're selected. Go 
to make those points into curves. Um, he says famous last words. Um, but you can also change uh, how the points are, are being held. So, for example, if I wanted to make that, not really, but I can um, I can then give myself another anchor point that I can manipulate there. Um, but yeah, you're not stuck with the points that you've created. It was essentially the point I was trying to make there. So if I zoom out a little bit, um, yeah, not too bad. So let's flatten that a little bit. Bring his chest in a fraction. Okay. That's quite rounded. So let's bring that up. Bring that down. I mean, you can play around with this for ages. Um, trying to perfect it, but yeah, so you start to get that shape around the chest area, okay? And and it's up to you now. Obviously, you click on it. I don't want a stroke color on mine. Um, fill color. Let's give him. Mm, it's boring. So let's give him this kind of green. Obviously, we can come into fill color. Change that a little bit. Should we want to? Change his shape a little bit. Um, I'll bring that out there. Change its shape. Mm, still not quite what I wanted. Pull that in a bit. Okay. That'll do for now. So at the moment. He sort of resembles character. Okay. So once again, I forgot to um, add that onto a layer. I'd like to pretend that I'm doing this on purpose, but I'm really not. Uh, so let's call this torso. Let's add it above current, so it's added to the top. Obviously, if it didn't add to the top, I could just use these arrows to move it up and down, should I wish. Um, but I'm just creating each layer on top. So I've got my torso here. At the moment, it's not on the right layer, so it's probably on ref. It's on lower leg. There you go. So right click, move to layer, torso. We'll be getting good at that the amount of times I've forgotten. Okay, so we're going to, we've got quite a darker chest here, but I'm going to make an even darker sort of sleeve for his arm now. Now, if we look at my reference from before, upper arm, lower arm, fist. Okay, and and you can see I've, I've actually gone to the trouble of adding a bit of shadow on the, on the inside of his sleeve just to make it feel like... Um, it's three-dimensional. It's exactly the same as I've done here with this shape, just to make his uh, head stand out from um, his neck. Because you can see I've drawn them all in one shape, but we'll get to that in a minute. Okay, so we're going to do the upper arm first, this shape here. So the ball joint would be around here for the shoulder. You can see we've still got a little bit of back creeping up from the side of it. So again, it's up to you. You could use the circle and manipulate it like we did before, um, remember. So if you really wanted to um, create something with that, you could sort of start to make that shape into the arm. In fact, the fact I've started with this, I might actually see it through. Or you could use the pen tool. Um, let's darken that a little bit so you can see it on top of the body. Um, so let's just carry on with that. I wasn't actually intending on using it, but it started to look a little bit how I wanted it to. So let's carry on with it. Um, let's drag that down a little bit. Okay, let's pull out the back for the tricep. Um, let's bring this in a little bit. And what I might do is add another point here. So remember to do that. Make sure that point selected. Make sure that point selected. Come to plus. And then I've got, whoops, then, uh, then I've got, famous last words, one, two, let's do it again. And then I've got this extra point here that I can manipulate now, should I wish to. So let's, let's call that the upper arm. Uh, let's rotate it a little bit. Okay, well, good time to use our pivot that we looked at earlier. So let's rotate that so it goes back a little bit. All right, so his arm's sort of in a backwards pose. Um, probably got way too much back going on here, which obviously I can go in and change a little bit. 
so don't be afraid to manipulate the image as you go um, yeah that's a little bit better um, obviously his arms not exactly perfect I might give him a bit more definition in like in terms of bicep there so let's curl that one in a little bit um, I could even add a new point I'm not sure if that do anything but let's have a look um, Uh, so upper arm yes it comes to a bit of a point but obviously we're going to draw the lower arm over the top of it so uh, let's go back to using our bezier let's draw him a lower arm obviously I've got to put the upper arm on its own layer but I will do that in a sec I'd rather just get this done let's create that um, let's bring it from there so we'll be making sort of this point here the elbow really uh, so this becomes the elbow so I'll follow that point around follow it to there zoom out let's create so that this comes in a little bit okay something like that I can use my eyedropper eyedrop on there get rid of my stroke color again so I've got something resembling a bit of an arm there. Obviously his arm's at quite an angle. My one here's a bit softer because my line comes down straight. But what I can do just to, to ease that a little bit is look at this elbow here. So if I bring that in a little bit. Something like that. These triceps can come in a little bit. Uh, yeah okay I mean it's quite a, a rigid sort of pose there but it will make it easier for showing in a bit um, so what I could obviously do as well if I wanted to is bring this down right by his side um, or even um, I mean this is going to mess up the orientation at the back but I could rotate a little bit uh, there bring it down there a little bit and then we'll just line it up pretty much lined up there like that softens his pose a little bit um, and then okay I'll apply those to the layers which I should have done earlier so let's bring upper arm okay and remember click on it move to layer arm not upper leg uh, and let's create a new layer called lower arm and I will actually attach the hand to this layer in a minute so lower arm I've put in below upper arm by accident so remember I can use my arrows right click on this move to layer lower arm and I'm actually going to draw the hand on this layer as well on my lower arm because I don't want to be able to move the hand on its own. So while the hand is its own project, uh, its own project, its, its own layer, uh, I'm going to move them all into the same layer, which isn't something I'd done originally. But realistically, I'm not going to want to move the hand without moving the lower arm uh, when I make my walk cycle. OK, um, so which means I'll export them all as the same object. So what I'm going to do here hands are always tricky to draw um, but if I use my example before you might want to get some reference yourself but uh, I'm not going to worry too much about my shadowing but what I am going to do is just quickly copy what I've drawn beforehand I can correct that in a minute it's not perfect so essentially he sort of is these are all his hands this is his thumb, his finger sorry and that's his thumb i'll bring this so that it's inside the hand um doubt that's gonna work you never know yeah okay so it did pick up the color of my hand so i'm looking at this sort of peachy color um pe yeah i suppose it's a bit peachy uh and then 
I don't want the stroke. Let's move the hand. Okay. Um, I can use the Bezier just to ease off on that corner a little bit. Um, that's that could probably be a bit softer there. The knuckle for the thumb, as can that one there. Okay. So let's zoom out. Character's hand. Whoa, my hand's big. We will scale that in a sec. So I'll put that by that. That's locking on for me. I'll work out to turn it off in a bit, I reckon. Right, so I'm just gonna scale down a fraction. There we go. Let's rotate by clicking on it twice. There you go. Let's lock that in there. Let's probably rotate a bit. I think it's helping me by auto snapping. Okay, rotate a bit more. Nice. Okay, and I could make a darkened ring around there to give it a bit of shadow or whatever, but I don't really care at this stage. It's not really going to add too much. So that hand there at the moment is on the reference layer. Now, what's going to happen when I move it to the lower arm is it's going to pop above here. So if I move it to the layer lower arm, now you can see. <clears throat> it's overlapping the hand again. So if you remember how we did that earlier, we came to our tool up here, lower the section. So it arranges it. So in Illustrator, what I'd essentially be doing is arranging send to background or send backwards. Uh, so it sends it behind the lower arm section. Um, right, so we're sort of rocking on with half of our body so far. Um, still not quite really convinced that that looks good, but um we get the idea so next thing we're going to do is create this head all in one shape okay i will even create the eyes um in the same object um within the head i'm going to make them all in the same layer um what could be a good idea essentially and if we look in my character reference folder is, is to have an idea about all these different um, expressions that you could have on your character so for example when your character is doing a lip sync this is the the shape it'll make for like a cartoon if it's a o e w r t so this is if you wanted to sort of do like a, a cut scene where your character's talking but also just to have a series of expressions that your character pulls faces you know like concerned happy here you go so he's got a e i uh, but also he's got these expressions as well which are quite nice things to have uh, and a lot of the emotion you can see comes from the eyebrows so we might um in time look at making some different versions of these so you could bring these in the different layers so that you could swap them out easy enough to to create different emotions in your character but just for this first one we're gonna we're gonna make a walk cycle so i'm gonna collect all this together uh and pop it in the same pop it in the same one all right so this time i'm actually gonna do it properly and press plus uh head add and we're going to create this head and neck layer all right so yeah most that we want all this to be attached it would pivot from sort of this point here so to do that let's come into our bezier tool again uh, i'm just going to create i'm going to start down here um, create myself a neck okay so it depends how tall i want my character's neck to be but i'm going to have a bit stubbier let's create this shape remember don't be too afraid to just put some points down like i've shown millions of times now you can then edit them afterwards if you feel you've got them wrong like for example my nose is probably going to end up being way too big or something but it doesn't really matter because you can come and correct like his forehead at the moment it's massive but that's fine um so let's I mean, the shape for the ear and so on, we're going to create in a minute with the hairline. But let's sort of bring that in. Bring his neck down here. OK. So if we paint dropper, whoops, if we paint dropper that, get rid of the stroke color. OK, so scary at the moment, right? I think we'd all agree. Um, let's move the head layer so first thing i'm going to do is move the head layer below the torso so the head's here let's move it because the torso is the main part really and you can see that neck disappears there that's good now i want to start creating some shape to him so 
moving around the bits you will see so you won't see all this and I will correct the hair in a minute but I do want him to feel a bit less like an alien um, right I've got to jump on discord again in a sec but if I that's pretty good I mean I know we're not going to see this but out of principle I don't want to leave him like he's got some kind of problem in the back of his head there so I'm looking at the chin where his mouth would be coming into a nose up into an eye socket okay so maybe his eye socket comes in a fraction there and then comes back out okay so let's do that nice okay so the next phase that we're going to do is add the hair to it so this all starts to feel a little bit more like he's an actual person rather than this strange shaped headed character okay um, realistically looking at that as well I'm not sure how well that is paint dropped because that looks a lot darker than that to my eye um, so I could bring the hue down a little bit there you go um, again my character's got quite a big nose um, obviously in my original character I haven't uh, really bought in for the eyes or anything like that but we'll play around with this in a minute obviously it's straightforward to just click on links and so on to, to move it right I'm just going to pause momentarily okay so let's finish this off then let's get his hair done so we're still going to work in this head layer um, let's use our pen tool um, we're going to create well I went for this elaborate look but you can create any look that you want really so I'm just going to start here uh, bring it out a little bit past the face uh, let's do something like this uh, we're gonna curl it out around the back so just going nice and steady with the pen tool so I'm going to bring it up to the back of the hair comes to about where the chin is really but um, I'm going to need to add another point up here to round that off actually in fact let's just not put that point down let's come to about there bring it up an inch create something that resembles an ear there we go and now a sideburn obviously it's a bit loose at the moment we can correct that afterwards I do not want a stroke color I would like hair uh, something like that we'll do probably just give him this kind of color um, da, 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 da. so you can now move these points around I don't want him to look like he's an elf with this here so oops, let's I didn't want to snap that uh, let's give him a bit more of a rounded ear oh, don't want to come up too far because it's the back of his head Obviously, I can move the back of his head should I need to, but um, let's do that. Make it a bit tighter there. Add more points if you feel you need them. Obviously, with the plus tool between two points. So remember, click to make sure two are selected, and it will put one in the middle if you press plus. Um, I don't actually feel I need that, but I will do it at principle and click on it on its own to move it. So let's zoom out a little bit. Okay, so he's rocking this kind of do. Uh, bit of a quiff at the front. Let's give him that there. Okay, let's round off the back a little bit um, da, 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 da. something like that okay probably could pull up front of his hair a little bit with that quiff um, yeah we're good okay you could play around with that for ages but I'm, I'm relatively happy with that all right so um, he says and then like it a bit further down like that okay anyway right I'm quite happy with that let's give him an eye and stuff now so I will 
Uh, his eye socket's about here. Let's give him. It's probably a little bit big. Happy with that. So let's do that. Okay. We can make his eyes crazy blue. Uh, let's go to our fill color. Okay. Give him this kind of color. Probably still a bit much. Let's dull it down a little bit. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. That'll do. Uh, right, Control D to duplicate. Let's change that to white. Scale it down. I'm holding Control. So I've made this sort of pupil. Probably still a little bit too big. Let's do that. So I was holding Control to uniform scale that. Excellent. So we've got some kind of eye socket there. Uh, let's give him uh, some kind of eyebrow. So many ways of doing that. You could draw it, but I might cheat and use a circle like we did before. Let's make it the same color as hair, because often people's colored eyebrows are the same as their hair. Let's go path, object to path. Zoom in. Just bring that circle up a little bit. That's fine. Let's move it down. Rotate a little bit. Okay, nice preened eyebrow there. And then we'll give him a bit of a mouth. So it's up to you what color you, you sort of do that mouth. Um, I'm not too worried. Uh, I might actually, look, we could cheat. Control D, duplicate that down there. Now we look sad, we don't want to do that. Uh, let's click on it again so we get rotate. Uh, I can then flatten that. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's make sure it's a little bit back. Let's flatten that a bit. No, I don't want it to be larger. in a bit. Let's give him like a, I think actually what I'll do, select the same skin color, make it a fraction darker. There you go. Something like that. Let's zoom out. It's probably a bit jagged there actually before I zoom out. So let's round that off a little bit. Obviously I can add extra points if I want it to feel a bit rounder here. Um, but let's zoom out see what we got. A bit crazy, but not too bad. So let's bring that in a little bit. Okay, nearly there. Bring that down. Like so. Zoom out. Okay, relatively happy with this dude. Um, yep. Yeah. Obviously, we're still going to try and do his blink, which I will add in a minute. But let's make sure all his head is in the head section. Yes, it is. Uh, and just to give him that three-dimensional fill that our last character had, you've got to give him sort of this shadow so this all doesn't mold into one sort of shape. So at the moment, there's no definition between his neck and his head. So the way I'm going to do that is, is make like a, a light gray color. Um, and we'll give him a chin bone of sorts. So exactly the same sort of graph for that. Let's zoom in because I don't want the grass ball all the way to that. There. Uh, and then we're just going to join it to here. A little bit like that. And then give him that again. I say it every time, but no stroke color. Give him like a dark gray. Let's give him that dark gray as well. Maybe change the opacity down a little bit. I don't want it to be fully transparent. There we go. So it just makes it feel a bit like there's a definition now between his, his neck and his, his face. 
obviously we can move that if we want to angle his the end of his um chin his cheekbone sort of make it a bit more defined so it can have more points and so on uh, but there you go he's got a bit of shape to him now his face feels three-dimensional uh, obviously you're capable of doing that for, for all of his body really uh, for like under his arms and things but you would then have to move those shadows as and when uh, we move the arms so let's zoom out a little bit got ourselves a character uh, we just need to make sure that he's got multiple arms and things so his hands do look a fraction small when I look at him uh, so we might scale those up a tiny bit There, might also move that point up to zoom in, move that point, move that point. That's better, I'm happy with that. Okay, so let's just take a look at him overall. Um, not too bad, not too bad. Let's straighten that up. Obviously, uh, mine looks a little bit like he's got a bit of a hoodie going on at the back here as well. Um, just the way I've drawn him really that wasn't intentional but you can if you're not happy move bits around until you're happy with them obviously that's the joy of this you um, you got full customization once you've done something it's not completely finished uh, but we're going to change this into a walk cycle all right so I think my guy would be trendy enough that his socks would match his um, his shirt so let's Use the eyedropper. Let's make it the colour of his sleeves. There you go, that looks a bit nicer. Uh, let's bring that point down. Not there. Let's bring that point down into there. Okay. So, happy days. Um, I also don't really like the colour that I've done his jeans. Uh, so, let's make those a fraction darker there. You could put a belt and so on in here and it would it would make this area look a bit nicer as well but for the sake of the fact we're nearly an hour we'll, we'll carry on from here so i'm gonna make sure i select everything down here which are his legs i'm gonna press um control and d i'm just gonna drag them across a little bit now like i said before i'm just going to darken some of these layers a little bit so that you can see a different uh, let's, yeah, let's do that. Okay, take both of his trouser legs, darken those a little bit. Okay, now at the moment these are all in the lower leg section. Um, I don't need to uh, move them behind the character because I'm going to export them and recompile them back together um, in another program. Obviously, I could put them in their own layers and so on, but I'm going to drag them when I come to animate them all behind the character. But I'm going to need a second leg, so let's leave that there. Slightly darker, that's good. I'm going to need a second arm as well. So I'm going to control D, drag that out, and so that we can differentiate which is the left and which is the right, so there's a bit of shadow to it. I'm just going to come into here and, and slightly darken that back arm. So if we hold them together, you can see there's a vast difference in the colours. Okay, so these ones, when they swing behind, you're clearly going to know that this is the back leg, this is the front leg, this is the back arm, this is the front arm. Okay, so here we've got all the assets that we're going to need. Um, in time, we are going to add a blink as well, like my character had. Um, if you are wanting to do the blink, uh, the simplest way to do that, um, that can sort of show you would be to make three phases of a circle so you would have something like that uh, let's think about this as an eyelid so let's go path object um, let's zoom in so say that was the first eyelid um, you would then blink I would add myself where's the head there I would add myself a new layer that I'd call blink okay uh, let's add it above the current, oops, like a minus X, I made two by accident, so I've got blink, let's right click that, move to layer, blink, okay, so that would sit there, 
let's extend it out so it's the same size. Uh, and yeah, in like animate or anything, you could then uh, animate that popping down. But because we're going to do this in something called frame by frame, which is animating every frame at a time, what I'm going to do is make three versions of this. So I'm going to control D uh, and then I'm going to do that myself. So halfway down blink. So you can see I've got the original blink, halfway down blink. Uh, and then I'm going to create the full blink, which essentially is eyes closed. So control D. I've copied, I've got the full blink. Okay, so let's just um, quickly show you. So get rid of that one. There's half blink. Get rid of that one. There's the first blink. Okay, so if I move those blinks away, like so, they are ready to be exported as well if I need them. Okay, so important things we're going to do, right? We're going to hit Control S to save. I'm going to make sure I save this file. I'm going to call it Man to Animate. Obviously, your characters all have names and so on. Um, you can call yours whatever you want. It doesn't really matter. Um, but I'm going to save mine in here. Yep. Uh, and then what we're going to do is, right? So that saved the Inkscape file, so I can come in and edit it all. Uh, I can now lose my reference, but what I'll do is just turn it off so I can't see it. Ah, and that shows me an interesting thing in the terms of that I'd forgotten to add these to the right layer. So move to layer. That was lucky. Uh, upper leg, move. Same for this one. Move to layer. Upper leg, move. Okay, let's turn reference off again. Good. Okay, so what I now need to do is start exporting each and every part. Okay. Um, and the way we're going to do that is as follows. Okay, so if I go to export PNG, selection, I've got my path saved here. I'm going to then call this, right? So let's, uh, for example, let's select his head. Um, he says, let me select his head, everything. Nope, let's make sure everything's selected. Good stuff, right, so that's pretty good. Okay, so let's, it's exporting as a PNG, which as we know, transports out with a transparent background. So I'm calling it, let's call it um, man head. I'm gonna call everything man underscore and then the body part, so man head. Okay, so let's export those. Let's just double check, see how that's worked. Da, 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 da. And where's that exported to? Ah, oh, there he is. Man head. Okay, so it's exported his head. Although, unfortunately, it has exported the top of his body as well. So I need to make sure I go in and make sure I haven't selected anything I didn't want in there. Okay, like so. I could do it this way. Make sure I've got everything in there. Like that. It didn't have that. Hold on. Okay. That's unfortunate. I don't know how I've done that. Bear with me. Let's hopefully get that back. Okay, my head did disappear for a second, uh, rather unfortunately. Uh, but now it's back did take a couple of seconds to uh, to get it back together but we're working fine here um, let's just close the reference um, let's do that okay so one two three okay so head shadow lips I in other hair nice Let's make sure we've got everything selected that we wanted, which we do have. Let's make sure we go export PNG. Okay, export PNG. Nice. Let's make sure we save this. Again, man head. Export. Yes, we want to replace it. Now, if I have a quick look. Let's refresh. 
push that. It's probably still saving at the moment. Okay, yep. Right. Let's overwrite that. Save it. Okay. Okay, and then what we're going to do once we've done that is then export each individual part. So we've done the head, so we've got to work our way down now uh, for each and every one and say man, torso. It doesn't necessarily matter what order you do it in, but you're going to have to make sure that you get each part. Press export. Okay, so I might create myself man underscore and then let's copy that just so I don't have to keep typing it. It's just rather than typing each body part, it's good to, to have the same first bit so that it keeps your um, keeps your structure so you can find it easy. So I'm going to call this upper arm F because it's the upper arm front. Um, press export. Let's change that to man lower arm F. Actually, come to think of it, let's make sure we add the hand into that as well. So I've got lower arm and hand, but we'll just call that lower arm F. Export. Um, man underscore upper leg F. Okay. Same again. Man underscore lower leg F. And then let's make sure oh, this is the tough bit. Trying to make sure we select sock. This is sock. There we go, sock and shoe. Um, so we'll call that man underscore um, foot F because it's from. Same applies for this. Okay. So let's call that man underscore foot. B for back, export. Hopefully you've got the hang of this now and aren't having to watch the video still to do each one, but we get it. Lower leg B for back. Man underscore upper leg B. Okay, so let's get the lower hand in that. So let's do that. Man underscore lower arm B. So essentially we're going to be able to export all these assets, bring them together in an animation tool, stick them back together so it looks like a full character, and animate your character in a in a walk cycle, which is our plan for the end of this week. Upper arm B. Okay, and then all that leaves now is the blinks. So let's we've got one blink two blinks, three blinks, so let's call that man blink 01, I'll copy that little bit there, just makes my life easier, okay, press export, which I forgot, let's call that man blink 2, export, let's call that man blink 3. We don't necessarily have to use this, but it just helps it to feel a bit more alive. Um, there, so let's zoom out. Here's the character that we've got ready that we're going to use. We've got two sets of arms, two sets of legs with feet, a torso, uh, a head, and then blinking. Okay, so obviously, like I said before, if you wanted to export a load of different mouth shapes or uh, eyebrows so that you can get expression, uh, you could also add some shading like I've done around the chin here, sort of around the ears. Uh, into the hair under the arms and so on if you wanted to but uh, for now I think this looks cool enough uh, we're going to take this into an animation program uh, stick it all together and make it work I've been trying to find animation programs that are useful for both um, Mac and PC because I know some of you are on PC so I so I think we might be using open tunes uh, from what I can see I know I've given you uh, Victorian Grego as well which we can do action scripting uh, it's the closest I could find to Adobe Animate but when it comes to rigging a character, because we've created all the limbs, we want to make a skeleton to connect all these parts together so we can make a cool walk cycle. I think Open Tunes might be the, the best way forward. Um, but yeah, so we've exported all our parts. Um, you can see they've all come out 
Uh, although looks like I've got some issues in terms of exporting different parts I didn't need. So looks like I'm going to have to hide each layer that I don't want. Um, and this does not work in the way that I imagined it was going to work. Uh, sorry, two seconds. Um, yeah, so basically what essentially I'm going to have to do is in my layer tool, uh, I'm going to have to come in, hide all the layers that I don't want and just export it one by one which I will do now and then show you the result. I will pause the video. Okay I have paused and I have now successfully managed to export each element individually as you can see they haven't brought in any of the other elements. The way I did this was by making only one layer visible at a time, making sure nothing's overlapping, highlighting the objects that I need and the way we did you know exporting and I'm export uh, doing it all individually so making sure you only turn on the layers you need one at a time and exporting them that way um, I did then I just pressed export um, torso and then you press export so replace because I already created it uh, so you have to do that individually for each layer uh, making sure basically if anything's overlapping it seems that it seems to um, think it's doing you a favor by copying what's underneath it obviously it's not but there you go. So now we've created our character. I'm quite happy with that. Obviously, you've got your own characters that you've drawn concept art of. So I'd like you to to uh, follow those, uh, create your own characters for your game. But this shows you the techniques, how you've done it. So all we've used really is the pen tool. Um, obviously, we've been able to edit the paths. Uh, we've also used basic primitives um, like circles and gone into object path to turn object to path. We've also used the pick colors, the um, eyedropper tool to make sure that we've got the colors the same for objects we wanted to be the same um, yeah so that is essentially what I've created for you for this session I'd really really like to see you post your characters uh, on the discord that would be fantastic but yeah thanks very much for listening and good luck with this one find me any questions online if you get stuck thank you bye